Hello, this is Angela Anderson. Thanks for joining me for this acrylic painting tutorial. In this video, I'm going to be showing you how to paint a colorful jellyfish. Uh, we're going to do it on a dark background. I've done a couple of jellyfish before, but uh, this one's kind of fun because it's on black. So I think it's really makes the colors pop. And I'll show you step by step how to do it from start to finish tonight. We're going to be focusing on glazing especially. So there's a little mm -hmm. teaser. I've got my husband, Mark, with me. Hey there, everybody. He's man chat tonight, so if you've got questions while I'm painting, you can ask those and we'll try to answer. Let's get started. All right, I'm using a um, long canvas for this one, obviously. Uh, we've got a long space to fill. This one is an 8x16 canvas, uh, Pro Dixie canvas from Fredericks. Really any um, long canvas would do. You could do a couple, two, three of these if you were using like a square or a, a rectangular canvas that, um, or you could even, you know, curve it. I'm going to show you how to do these long um, lines. So line work is going to be um, one of the other things that we'll work on, and then we'll be also going over some glazing techniques and things tonight. Um, you'll also want some chalk for drawing. Um, I've coated this with black, just so any black will do. You could even use a dark blue or just whatever color you wanted. Um, and then for the actual um, tendrils and things, um, you're going to want a liner. Now, um, generally, I don't recommend a script liner for beginners because they um, can be difficult to use. But for these really long lines that we need, where we're going from here all the way down here, you're really going to need a little bit bigger liner. These script liners, this was a number two script liner. It's got really long bristles and it'll hold a lot more paint so that we'll be able to get from one end to the other. If you use a shorter liner, um, you probably only give it halfway and then you have to reload it and you could have, you know, breaks in your line. So um, just something to think about. Um, also, uh, Dagger Striper is another one. If you don't have a liner brush or a script liner like this, if you have like a Dagger Striper or even an angle brush would do, as long as you can kind of keep it on its edge like this, we can do some lines with it. And then um, I've got an angle brush number six and a filbert number six for filling in some of the big, bigger details and um, other things. All right, let me go over the colors. These are all Princeton brushes, by the way, and they, they featured me in their Ooh. newsletter this week, yeah. today, actually. <laughs> it was pretty cool. <laughs> so, uh, yeah. Yeah, they, they didn't feature me. They're a great sponsor. We've worked with them for a long time. So yeah. these are their 6100 series. Uh, and then uh, this the script liner is the Velvet Touch. And then this one's the Umbria and the Dagger Striper. So 3 8 inch. So if you're wanting to look those up. All right. Uh, carbon Black, Burnt Umber, Burnt Sienna, uh, Cadmium Yellow Light, Cadmium Orange, Quinacridone Magenta, um, uh, Ultramarine Blue, and this one is uh, Thalo Turquoise. If you don't have that one, you could use a Thalo Green or a Thalo Blue. Either one of those would work as well. Okay, my dog is... Oh, he's got... <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Getting distracted. Uh, and then this one is... Uh, uh, titanium white and gloss glazing liquid. I thought about putting out some um, zinc white and I might grab that at the end um, if I need it. Um, but I, I don't think I'm going to want to do fully transparent. I think I'm going to go um, with the titanium white with the glazing liquid because this black is going to be dark enough um, to cover anyway. So I'm going to move my camera over just a little bit so I don't have to move my body. <laughs> <laughs> Easier. I like that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. Let me, let me start by drawing out our um, little jellyfish here. So he is, I'm going to really kind of scoot, scoot him really close to the edge here and make this part fairly large. Fill up that whole area right there. And then kind of draw sort of like an oval here, oval shape. And then you're going to want to come up, make a smaller oval inside that oval, if that makes sense. So kind of a oval and girding the edge. And then this one is kind of domed, so sort of like a mushroom head almost. We can call this guy mushroom head. All right. And then we're going to have all these 
little things coming out here. Um, I kind of wish that I had used this, the bigger canvas now. Realizing I don't have a lot of room on this one to do all the little do's that I want. I might make this a little bit smaller after all. Maybe a little bit smaller just to make these longer lines look longer. Now, is this one of the ones that we... We took a picture in Atlanta? Yeah, it's it's like it. It's okay. not our picture, but yeah, yeah, it's like it. Yep. And they're pretty cool when you put on the black lights and stuff like that on. Right. They had they had you colors. walk into the Atlanta Aquarium and they have these jellyfish. Um, I think it's this kind actually, and they have strobe or not strobe lights, but um, lights. yeah, lights lighting them up um, in different colors. So they look like they're changing colors. All right, so there we go. So there's our, that looks about right. Um, made them, like I said, a little bit bigger just to kind of fill the space a little bit more. All right, so I'm gonna start out with white. And a little bit of magenta and a little bit of yellow. But I want it pretty pretty light here, so I'm gonna leave that and get a little bit more white here. <clears throat> and then pick up that color again. Okay, so that's kind of like a salmon-y yellowish color. I'm going to start by painting in the top part of the jellyfish and I'm using this filbert it's got a nice rounded edge to make it a little bit easier to get these smooth edges and I'm going to just pull down try to cover it as cleanly as I can this first layer I know it's not going to cover completely because this black is really dark I could have painted around it, but I had so many other things going on with this painting. Well, you know, all these little lines and things in the body that I just, I didn't want to have to fight the fight the black. I'm just going to, you know, there's, there, you can really paint around the black is what I'm saying dog is, is joining a bone right behind us here. It's not a bone, it's a hoof, cow hoof. Okay, okay. It's making a lot of noise, sorry. It's not me. No, it's not Mark enjoying the cow This time. <laughs> Hope everybody's right. doing great. So now doing yellow with a little bit of this white color added. What? So it's just hoping everybody's doing great. Yeah, hope you guys... If you're new to our channel, you subscribe and come back. And join us for our live streams. Do these right now, once a week. We normally do them twice a week, but we kind of took some time off this summer because it was slowing down and we had some things going on. And, and now we've got a lot more stuff going on because <laughs> we've got some couple of grandbabies coming yeah. the next couple months. So Fun. we'll... Our schedule is fluid, so we'll just say we're putting out our schedule, but <laughs> it may change. <laughs> All the <of> babies. <laughs> Let's see. All right, so, and I want this bottom edge to kind of fade out, so I'm just going to kind of use what's left in my brush and sort of just brush it lightly, and you see how it's kind of breaking up and showing through that black a little bit. That's what I want it to do. I just want it to kind of be really faded and soft there. And you can see where, like, the, the paint is only going to go on so thick. Um, and if I try to put too much paint down, it's just going to start to lift off. You can see every time I go over this area that's got that thick paint, it just kind of lifts more of it off and that black shows through so I need to let that dry because if I don't then it's just going to continue to do that and get worse and worse and worse so but I want a really nice bright glow right there 
Okay, that feels really weird having <laughs> that paint puck. I put a paint puck in my water. I don't know if you noticed that before I started adding dirt, adding paint to it. You can't see it anymore, but it feels really weird <laughs> in there. I think it'll help clean my brushes out better, though, while I'm working. Okay. Um, right, I'm going to just take some water and lightly take off my chalk lines so I can see what I got going on. I'm going to take off these. I don't need these. I'll just do it organically. It'll be better than trying to follow lines. All right, so there we go. Come on, dry. So somebody wanted to know what is a paint puck. It's oh. just a little rubber thing, right? That yeah, it comes, it came with the, it was like a, a little thing that. So it's on the bottom, it's got a little rubber yeah. nubs on it that helps. Right, break yeah, off the paint it's the stuff. bottom of one of these. This, right. It's called Paint Puck is the na is a brand name, though, if you look it up. I think I have them maybe in my Amazon shop. I'm not really sure. I can I can put that, but I put it in my water thing. It kind of wedged in there. Actually, I can lift this up to get it out. There you go. Oh, no. Maybe. It's created a uh, suction. <laughs> you can see it <laughs> there. <laughs> so. But you can't play hockey with it, right? No. Okay. No, but it wedged in there nicely. I've just been concerned about that metal, the little metal grate um, kind of damaging my brushes. So, put that in there to keep me from doing it. All right. Well, let's see. I gotta let that dry completely um, before I do anything else, but I guess I can start on some of this. Well, no, I, I really kind of need this to be done before I start because a lot of this is gonna go over the top of this. So, get out a hair dryer if you got one. I probably just need to, I'm gonna grab mine. Well, we can, can use it. It's not very loud. I was gonna say, we, we can, oh, look at that, huh? Pretty good. Yeah, it's not loud. It's really a heat gun, which is not, it's an embossing heat tool, so you're not really supposed to use it for acrylic paint, but I don't let it get hot, you know. It's not hot until you use it for a little while, and then it gets real hot, and then I turn it off, because you don't want to use really high heat on acrylic paint. Can they hear me over the sound of it? <laughs> it sounds really amazing. Huh? I've, I've turned down your mic. Okay. <laughs> Sorry. So this is great. I hope everybody's doing well. We're having a heat wave here. What? We're having a heat wave here. It's like nearly 100 degrees outside. Yeah. And so we're just... Living. What? We're just living with our heat wave mm -hmm. here. My hairdresser was calling it false fall. <laughs> we had a false fall where it gave us hope that fall was really here, but haha, -ha, no. Came back nice and nice and strong. Hot. Okay, so that is mostly dry. This one, this is not completely dry yet. If you hold your hand on your paint, like, you know, once it's starting to dry, you can kind of tell where it's still evaporating because it'll be cool. So um, this has still got a little coolness to it. This is good. All right, so I'm going to work on this up, upper area here, and this is where the glazing is going to come in. So having a glazing medium is really helpful, um, especially if you're doing things like landscapes, clouds, and things, or anytime you're um, wanting to add depth, so like fur on um, an animal, or um, this case where we've got this light color back here, we're going to want to add some darker colors on top. Um, Glazing allows this underneath part to show through. Um, so I'm going to grab a little bit of my quinacridone magenta, a little bit of burnt sienna, and my glazing medium. 
And if you don't have glazing medium, you can use like matte medium um, works. Um, water could work too. It glazing medium works a little bit better, but because um, it's got an extender in it. So I'm going to go through here, and you can see kind of it goes on a little bit streaky. So um, you can, I'm going to use that to my advantage, though. I'm going to kind of streak it on here to create those little ridges in my ruffles, ruffle stripes, whatever it is. We said ru ridges. I uh, just remember that commercial. Yeah. Oh, ruffles have ridges. Yeah. yeah. Thinking um, of food again. Getting the burnt sienna or burnt umber here. And I'm going to kind of pull up along this edge here and add a little that color. Just darkening that up. And I'm not adding as much glaze here. I'm kind of going on fairly dark with this. So I want it to cover pretty well. And I want it to go around this corner. Okay, my dog is just <laughs> flipping out today. Dabbing in some lines here. This this paint is still a little bit wet, so I don't want to press down too hard. But I'm kind of just trying to add a little detail here. And I probably could have done another layer of the lighter color because I am seeing a little through. But I'll probably add some streaks in there with some highlights and that'll cover it. So that'll be pretty good. And I have made it a little bit more noticeable too. You know, it's kind of like tilted a little bit more in the picture. And I've kind of made it so that more of that top part is showing. Just. I like those stripes. No other reason. Um, all right, that's good. What? <laughs> no other reason needed. No other reason. Just because I could. Um, all right. So I'm going to get some of the yellow. And I'm going to get some white. And there's some area of white right over here. Let me get... If you get too much paint on your brush, you can kind of just squeegee it off instead of wiping it on your towel. Save it and then wipe your towel and get the color you really want. Okay, there we go. So I want white over here. Really nice glow happening. kind of starts to go to the yellow. So, dab over, give a second coat to this with this yellow and that'll really help cover a lot better than it is right now. Yellow. And then all this stuff is kind of coming from in here, so start kind of dabbing so that there's a little bit of that black peeking through. Okay. And really this area probably I'm going to get a little bit of this pink magenta color. This was the magenta and the burnt sienna from up here. I'm going to use a little bit of it down here. Just inside the and just kind of using my brush to divvy dab, we just kind of dab and swish it a little bit. Nothing really major. I don't want any like obvious start and stops to these or I'm not trying to create like a uh, anything in particular here. I'm just trying to kind of create some patterns in there. I'm gonna get some of the white and add a little bit of that 
pink here, that pink color that we mixed up. And add some of that. Same way, just kind of dab dabbing it. All right, and then right up under here, I'm gonna get some burnt sienna in my yellow. Create a dark yellow. going to create like a little, a little dark yellow membrane kind of coming down right here. And then get those, that darker burnt umber color. And I'm just going to use the edge of my brush here and find where these lines came down and continue them down here. kind of curve in. And I'm skipping the this part here. Well, it is kind of showing through a little bit on there. I will go ahead and do it. Grab the angle brush now. Are you okay? Mm -hmm. Yeah, the top's outside. Okay. It's gonna go away from the scratch on the door. Oh. Okay. I don't want to sit down and then have to get back up to get okay. the door. Okay. I was just bending over like you were looking at something. Oh yeah, I was reading the chat. Make, ah. make sure I didn't miss anything. Check. All right. I'm gonna get the white here, and I'm gonna just start putting little dab dabs of white little dots of white just using the tip of the brush pointing down okay and then I'm gonna get a little bit more of this purple here that or the pink I mean the magenta with my white make a bright light pink this should be dry. Okay, and then I can go in here and add some highlights with my white. Kind of in between where I did those dark areas there. Hey, do you want to hear some more of the magenta here? What? Do you want to hear some dad jokes about laundry? No. I have loads of them. Oh gosh. Mark Anderson. This is this is why I get comments about you. <laughs> <laughs> that right there. If you're wondering. <laughs> No, I wasn't really wondering. You weren't wondering. I, I couldn't okay. care less, to be honest. <laughs> <laughs> you do you, honey. Yeah. <laughs> Don't worry about the haters. Okay. I'm just going in, kind of alternating. Really covering up a lot of my glaze, but I mostly did it so that you could see how that technique works. So, Not that we absolutely needed it right there. Okay, that looks good. Um, I'm going to get a little bit of this yellow that we mixed up before, and in between here, these areas have a little bit of yellow, so there's like every other stripe has a little bit of yellow. I 
happening. He waited for you to sit down. Yes. <laughs> like he knows. the passive aggressive king now. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> going for your title. <laughs> I'm not going to go down easy, that's for sure. <laughs> and burnt umber or burnt sienna I mean and just this this is one of those things and I find with acrylics it's just more layers tend to give you more depth so this is about the only major you know thing to look at on the canvas so I'm just going to take my time on it and do this part the little lines for the tendrils whatever tentacles are not going to take very long okay All the lines are kind of coming from this middle part here. So make sure that you're kind of curving these side ones in so that they're they're not going straight here. They're coming in and they're going to meet up here at the top. So just make sure you're kind of adjusting them for that. Okay, that looks good. And I'm going to kind of soften it up blend them in towards the middle of the yellow areas. I see kind of some blending happening there. Might even get a little glaze to do it. I'm going to pull that dark stripe in. And then I'm going to get some of the glaze with this. And just pull up. Darken up the bottom edge there. And I put the color down and then I very lightly go back over it. And that um, helps blend it out. So... Okay, that looks good. Pretty happy with that. I think I could go a little bit brighter with the top, with the white again. So I'm gonna get a little bit more white with this pink and just go right here at the top with it. Dab it on with the tip of the brush. So I'm gonna have good control. And I'm just really kind of dabbling it, if that's for lack of a better word, just kind of dabbing it on, creating like a broken line, broken little dabs. And as I get down here, I'm kind of using less pressure, so they're not going on as thick. So a little bit heavier at the top, and then as they come down, they get a little bit thinner. I get some yellow for the ones in the yellow sections. I'll do those with a little bit of yellow. A little bit of highlight on. There we go. Okay. Got a good, nice highlight there. Um, get some of this. Cadmium yellow. Got a 
little bit of that mixture with the burnt sienna, but more cadmium yellow this time. I'm going to kind of put that over the top of this section. I don't want it to cover completely those lines though, so I'm just going to lightly cover that section. There we go. And then I'm going to use this color to dot in my little, maybe a little bit darker, maybe a little bit more of that. I'm going to dab in some dots with that color. Just little dots. And then at each end of these has kind of a dark are kind of coming off of there too so I'm going to come down a little ways and start just kind of doubting in random little these are where the tentacles are going to come from okay and there's some back here that we're seeing too kind of coming around through okay and I think I'm going to go ahead and use this angle brush for the little tentacle thing parts. Um, and I think I'm just going to use white and then we'll glaze it. So. going to load it with white. This got a little bit of the yellow in it. That's fine. And I'm going to add a little bit of glaze because I want it to be semi-transparent. Titanium white is very opaque. So I can see like that's kind of how transparent it will be. But running it through my palette there, I can kind of see that's about where I want it to be. Adding a little bit more water. But I want it really fluid so that I can do these nice long lines with no resistance with my paint. It's going to catch on the canvas plenty, so I need it, the paint to be really smooth. All right, so I'm going to press my brush flat, and I'm going to scoop it through and just lightly press it flat again. So I have a pretty good well of paint on there, if you can see that. But the edge, the tip, is really straight. So I'm not pressing down too hard. So let me do that again. I press down hard through my paint. You can even do it off to the side here to get a really good point on it, right? And then I'm going to scoop up a little bit more paint and just run it through, again, both sides through that thicker paint so it... My, my brush is already at a point and then I'm picking up a little bit more paint and then pressing it to a point again so it'll the paint will be back in here it won't be at the tip that's what I need okay all right here goes nothing um, let me see here and this may be a little bit a little bit heavy we'll see when we get going here I can stop and reload it if I have it too thick with paint but let me turn it over here so kind of I'm seeing like a little line coming down that way and then it sort of flips over and as we do this I'm going to try to keep this end going in a straight ish line or kind of a long curved line so I'll be flipping the brush back and forth like this, but this is going to be kind of my pivot point. I'm going to keep this in line, if that makes sense. So you'll see as I do it. So I'm going to twist it 
and bring it up this way. Twist. Kind of. A little bit more paint. I want, I want a little bit more wave action there. too much paint. I'm just drawing some of that off. Okay, then I'm going to go through that wet paint puddle and really just kind of press down, wiggle it. with a different brush. Let me see, because I don't really love the, I didn't get enough wrinkly action there, so I'm not really happy with how that brush was responding to my wiggles. <laughs> so I'm going to use the, there we go, that one's kind of doing a little bit better. bit better. Still kind of odd. I'm going to do this one up again. So you don't have to get it right the first time. We And while it's wet is the best time to do this if you are going to make any corrections because this paint is is thin enough that it'll, it'll lift off pretty easily. And Do other little things with it. Okay. Go over. Okay. And if they're not able to do this themselves, they can just ship you the, their canvas and you can do it for them, right? <laughs> ship it back? Is that... No? Okay. <laughs> no. Not part of the deal? Mm -mm. Okay. Mm -mm. Okay, so that's that. Let's go ahead and do our lines. And I'm going to do those also with the same color, this white. I might add a little bit of blue to it this time. So I see some blue in the photo. But the nice thing about doing things on black is that if we do glaze over the top of the black, it's not going to tint the black. Black's as, you know, it's already as dark, unless I use a color that's opaque to do my glazing, which I'm not going to. Um, you won't see. Sorry, I don't have an answer for that. <laughs> Alexa doesn't have an answer for that either. <laughs> it's not going to happen. Okay. So I'm just going to kind of pick spots here and do my little lines. 
And they all kind of flow together, so it's good to kind of have them sort of generally in the same direction using this liner brush and holding it a little bit far back so I'm not like choked up on it. If I do it too tight, if I hold it too tight, um, I won't get the as free flow as I want. Uh, it'll be a little bit harder to control it. So if I hold it a little bit farther back, I can just let the brush do the work, barely touching the tip. It um, and I'm not and I'm. If you want, you can you can rest your fist or something um, under your hand so that you don't go any closer to the canvas. It can take some practice. Um, I do find that working left to right helps. So having um, having your workspace open so that you can really get a nice smooth line is key And it's breaking up right here. That means that I either didn't have enough paint on my brush or didn't, and that's the case in this, where it just wasn't thin enough, but my paint's thin enough. It's it's kind of a catch-22. You want your paint to be thin enough to go on really smoothly and easily, but you don't want it so thin that it it um, is transparent, you know? So kind of have to... So that's just one of those practice things. Huh? Is that just one of those practice things? Yeah, I would practice it. Yeah. yeah. And I'm not going to do the ones in, anymore in the middle because I realize I need to I need to glaze my my um, area here, which is not ready to do. Let me go ahead and get my carbon black and clean up around my. edges here and I'm going to use a little bit of ultramarine blue and glaze a little bit of ultramarine blue just along the edges of this just kind of this electric blue just a tiny bit it's kind of like that probably low light black light effect you know but that blue really will kind of make it pop let me see if I can get this color in here I'm gonna mix a little bit of purple using the magenta and the ultramarine blue and grab my glaze your first layer to be dry completely before you do this. So I'm going to go ahead and dry it again. I could tell some more jokes. What? I could tell some more jokes. <laughs> you tell them about Patreon. Tell them about what? You tell them about Patreon. Ooh, Patreon. Yeah, patreon.com slash Angela Fine Art. And over there, we have different levels right now. We got the $2 level with the traceables. And we have the... $5 level, which is the traceables plus a bonus image, which is done once a month. We did that last weekend. 
And then we do the Attendal level, which is all that, plus the challenge image where she paints each week. That's the bonus image that we did last Saturday, or a week ago Saturday, right? It was awesome. It was fun. And access to all those levels gets you access to all of the stuff at that level. So going back to February 2017. So it's not just this month's painting. It's all the previous ones, too. And this one is the challenge image, which she does on Thursdays. And she paints a little bit each week, about an hour or two. And then by the end of the month, sometimes a little bit longer, you'll have a finished painting. <clears throat> And yes, the macarons are delicious. And we thank all of the amazing, the thousands of supporters that we have over on Patreon. So if you're interested in and now you're able to sign up, if you sign up today, then it's good for the calendar uh, for the rest of the month, meaning, or for a month. Before it used to be a calendar a month, but now it's 30 days. So it's an even better deal. And I think that's about it. Are you still drying over there? What? You still drying over there? I am. Huh. Yeah, that glaze, the glaze has an extender in it, so it makes it, takes it longer to dry. Oh. <laughs> I was just commenting on how good those macarons were. What? Those macarons. Yeah, the and macarons. They were good. Yes, they were very good. They were delicious. Yes. We might have some more this weekend. Oh, yes, please. <laughs> okay. Um, let me put out some fresh glazing liquid. And I'm realizing I shouldn't have done any of these lines in through here. Because <laughs> I'm going to have to glaze over them. So I'm going to use the purple or the magenta and put that over the top of this area here. And what the, the reason why I didn't do, I'm doing it this way and did not do the, um, just a light pink because this will actually be a brighter color, more vivid and saturated than the white version would. So if I go in pretty thick with my glaze here over this top of the over the top of this white paint, that white will make the color glow through it. It's actually bouncing light back through itself, the white paint is, and so it will actually make this paint much more vivid than it would be if I had just painted it with pink. Because you can see the difference right here. There's the pink that I made. You see how chalky it is? If I glaze over it with this, it'll brighten it up a little bit. And I can glaze it without, thin enough that it's actually not really changing the value much. It's not making it darker. It's just making it brighter. So doing that there, I'm going to add some orange for some intensity. More reddish tone. Now that cadmium orange is opaque. Opaque colors are not as good to glaze with. So you just have to know that. That's why I'm adding more of that transparent quinacridone back in with it because it'll help. But add some of that. And like I said, I'm not really worried too much about my black because you can see it's not really showing up on my black. Um, this orange might show up somewhat, so I'm going to try to keep the orange color to the actual area here and not go over too much into my black but we're starting to get there I feel like this area probably is missing like one of these coming down here so I'm going to actually go ahead and put one in with my pink we'll see what it looks like compared to the other ones we'll mix in some pink here So that one's a little bit more opaque. I might 
use a little bit of this color along the along the edge of this also makes makes it more opaque though so if you want your the translucency that we've got going on here you probably don't want to do too much of this because it is kind of losing the translucency and I don't know if I love that what I just did here let me see if I can take I don't know if I can take it off though Ooh, yeah just making it a little too heavy there. brighter magenta here in a couple of places and then let's get the blue ultramarine blue the glaze oops I got a little bit of the turquoise too but that's okay so I'm going to use that towards the ends where it starts to disappear and I can glaze as many times as I want so you can see when I glaze over the magenta areas it's going to turn it kind of purple where the two overlap because they're both transparent colors so it's a nice way of adding soft translucent color really pretty I'm not loving it yet that just means I can't I gotta keep adding layers up the quinacridone or the um, cadmiums here the cadmium yellow and cadmium orange together I'm gonna bring some of that color down onto these from the middle just kind of dab it along there ruffled edges and then kind of fade it out it's kind of catching the glow from the middle part and then kind of eventually sort of tapering off That's a thing that um, that you want to do, you know, with your paint. Here is if you've got an area that looks a little unresolved. A lot of times, um, what you can do is take some of the colors 
next to it. So whatever colors, you know, in this case, we've got this yellow, and then we, we have this abrupt change to this magenta color here and to kind of tran uh, transition a little bit more smoothly, you can add that yellow in over the top of the of that. I'm going to start doing it with these little lines here with the magenta. Going over these blue lines. bit colorful I, th I definitely think I went a little bit heavy on the on the glaze on the thing I might have I might have done better to do the zinc white after all instead of the titanium white because it was just a little bit maybe too opaque um, I could I could uh, try glazing a little bit of black over the top of it so we can try that a little bit and that can help bring it back to the original background color a little bit in places kind of fade it out slightly I don't want a ton of it in here but it might do it in a couple places this is just that carbon black from the background that I'm glazing back over just to soften the effect of the ruffles. Mostly in this back half of it. See, they kind of stayed. I want them to kind of fade out a little bit more. nice. How's everybody doing tonight in chat? I think they're doing all right. Good. Yeah, we got all of our unusual suspects, so. Nice. Hanging out, Good. being friendly as always. Well, um, I wouldn't expect any different. Some great people hang out with us. Mm -hmm. Get cookies. Oh, yeah. Thank you, Carol. Mm -hmm. Is she watching? Uh, I think Carolyn, yes, she is. Thank you, Carol. Lynn. We've been enjoying your cookies. Carolyn. Yeah. Carolyn. Carolyn? I thought it was Carol. Carolyn. Carol. Oh, sorry. Mm -hmm. I got the wrong. That's not do. Don't worry, Carolyn. My I I do that to my kids all the time. So I call the dog Spencer. So you're in good company. <laughs> all my most loved people get called the wrong name. <laughs> I am not loving this. That black is helping. Yeah, I just went a little bit too heavy handed with the black, with the color, with the white. But this black is helping kind of make it look a little bit more translucent. Okay, and I'm gonna get my angle bar or my script liner out and get I'm going to get some fluid white here so we got some amazing cookies from Carol mm -hmm. Carolyn and a show here on the oh nice if I can figure there it out go. I know yeah, I the logo and everything. Logo <laughs> That's pretty impressive. Yeah. <laughs> Just got a friend that made them. You know, the only problem with these cookies are. What? I didn't find a tank in there. Oh. Maybe next time. 
I'll make you tank at Christmas time. I have a tank cookie. Yes, you do. Cutter <laughs> that I bought just for Mark. We found that at Silver Hollow Studio. Yeah. We did. That's awesome. Okay, using the white, I have a little teeny tiny bit of blue in here. I'm just going to find the edge that I want to be my leading edge that's catching the light. And I'm going to just wiggle, wiggle, wiggle. And I think less is more. Just kind of keeping it really random is the key here. This is really going to make it pop, though. This is going to make it come together. Right before this, it was looking a little bit sad, but this is going to make it make sense. And it just brings those leading edges out, pops the coat, pops the edge towards us to make it look more dimensional. See, now we got it. Even I was starting to not like it. But now this really helped. We needed this. We needed that. Okay. Alright, so we got some really nice, lovely things going on now. I'm going to bring some really wild lines going on through here with this white. And any of these that I lost, I can put them back in. Wait until you do all the rest of that, though, before you do these lines that I did before, because this is going to be hard to kind of figure out where they are match them up because <laughs> I covered so much of them up I don't even know where they went to but yeah here we go so we're almost done bright brightness as far as the this part really looks like it's nicely glowing you might add just a tiny bit more white right in the brightest part of it right here the blue 
ultramarine blue. Some glaze, if I can get any. Make sure this is dry. I think they're mostly dry. Let me glaze over. Ultramarine blue is is an opaque or not an opaque a, a translucent color, so it's kind of pretty close to transparent on the scale there. It's only there's transparent opaque there, so it's real close to transparent. So it does really well for glazing. So keep an eye on that when you're glazing. That's really important. Is just kind of know what color you're using and if it if it's transparent or not. If it's not transparent, it's not going to glaze very well. What it'll do is like leave a chalky. If I did it, if I did an opaque color here, everywhere that it covered the the black, it would it would leave a chalky mark. But this this. Uh, ultramarine blue. It might show a little bit. It might tint my black a little bit. I don't really care. Um, it's dark enough that it's, it's going to be fine. And I could, but you can see it's, you know, it's pretty much like maybe if you hold, held it in the right light, you could see a little bit of that blue. But what I could do is do the whole background with this blue if I was worried about it. You know, if I didn't like that it's showing there, I could just take that blue and put it over the other areas and places so that it it kind of is an overall sort of glow in the background. Not really, it's not going to really be noticeable. It's going to look black, but if you held it in the right light, it might have a little bit of a blue tint to it. So, but you see how much more bright um, that makes that those tendrils there using this ultramarine blue whoops I got a little bit of light so that's what that, that chalkiness there happening is because I got a little bit of that light color that was mixed on that let me move, take that off of there there we go little bit more glazing medium but we're almost done I'm gonna do a little bit of magenta magenta the same way and it'll really pop on these areas where I added this bright bright highlight with that magenta so I'm gonna add a little bit more blue here and then we'll mix do the magenta I didn't use a whole lot of that turquoise I saw a little bit of turquoise in here but I didn't use a ton of it so if you want a little bit more, you can add, do some turquoise with this, and I might just do it right now. Do a little bit of turquoise in a couple of places. Maybe a couple of these areas here. That's pretty. And if you want to glaze with the yellow, I would glaze with like um, Indian yellow hue. That one's transparent, so that'll make a nice, uh, or uh, Nickel Azo yellow makes a really nice glaze. Um, one of those, it's a transparent yellow instead of that cadmium yellow. We t the cadmium yellow won't glaze well. Okay, so I'm gonna go over and try to go over these little lines a little bit. And glaze some of that magenta over and kind of cross over the blue so it kind of turns purple. We already did this once. So this is our second 
second layer. That one is way too dark. I'm just gonna wipe that off. want to tint too much on the paint on the yellow but it's fine I'm not minding it so I'm gonna go ahead and go over that area really add some of that pink in or the magenta in along here where they first come out close pretty, pretty close to the same and I'm gonna get the white and then just go back in here and dab little dots along those highlighted areas so little dots of just plain white not in all areas this time I'm gonna be a little bit more selective where I put it brightest spots where I want it to look like it's really coming out at us. And this time I'm using more of the white white, not the blue mixture. There we go. Nice. Very cool. Like this is one that I would say stand back because I'm looking at it in my monitor a lot. It helps me get a little bit of perspective on it because sitting right here, sometimes it looks bad, you know, <laughs> like it looks funky, especially when you're still like in the middle stages. It looks really weird sometimes when you're working on some of these layers. So I'd say kind of step back and look at it a few times from a distance as you're before you're, you know, putting in your final details and things will really help. Yeah. All right. I think I'm going to put a couple lines through that area there. I feel like it's a little too... I'm going to use magenta with my white here. Just put in a few lines right through here. Ooh, I should have. It's spreading right there because mm -hmm. it, it was wet. Didn't think that through. It's okay. Yeah, it's all right. <clears throat> it looks like some of the parts of the jellyfish are not you know, like tree limb or tree branches where they're thicker at the beginning and right. continuously narrow. Yeah, that's like there's true. Some they variation do. Variation all the way down. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, so let's do like one of these that kind of comes up here and just sort of ends coming out. I can really create movement in your piece by you know, adding little lines moving the eye around I think I'm just going to kind of tuck one in here 
kind of behind everything and then bring it down the middle. All right, I think probably have way too many lines, but there's actually more lines than you realize in here. I mean, or that you think, because there's some. Think about it. They're they're behind it too, so we're not. We're just focusing on the ones that are in front here, but they're also coming from underneath because it's a circle. So, you know, you can tuck some in. You could start by doing some from the back and then do the these on top and then, you know, end with the ones on top on the front side, if that makes sense. I'm going to make sure that the ones that are on top of these, though, don't, have stuff covering them because I'm seeing that I covered some of these so I see one coming through here that has stuff covering it so I'm going to go back over it so maybe save these last little bits for the last 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 thing you do I kind of did them a little early so do the ones that are kind of behind everything first and maybe start them from but down here and do lines then do the bigger ones and then end with the big ones, these ones that are in front. Um, and that way it'll kind of all look good. And then you can glaze it at any time that you want. The glaze won't really matter to the um, it's not covering up anything. It's, it's the covering up when I did my opaque layers on top of the thing. It kind of covered up my lines here. All right. I don't know what I'm saying. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, trying to explain myself not doing a very good job. All right. Let me get a little bit of the burnt sienna and quinacridone magenta. I'm going to darken up at the top of all of these little bits because I kind of lost those on some of them dark and maybe kind of start out the lines coming down with a little bit of that this is you know the the lines are Going over the top of a line that you've already done is definitely an advanced technique. So if you have trouble with lines, um, I would suggest just doing it once and not not going over them like I'm doing here. Um, just doing it and using your glaze to kind of tint them if you need to. Um, but that's just... Because otherwise you might end up with with your lines thicker than you want them. So, all right, I think I'm gonna stop there. Pretty happy with that, I think. It's all right. I'm gonna try to sign. We'll see. This may be. Actually, I'm gonna use this to do some dots on my top. top. I'm gonna some dots on here, I noticed. Yeah, go ahead and do a super chat and I'll sign it here. Right. Here we go. Super chat. Woo. Thank you. Super chat tonight was from Karen. With the Sheba dog clapping his hands. Nice. I think they're saying bravo, too. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Karen. Thank you very much, Karen. That's so sweet. Yeah, not Sheba. Mm -hmm. And then we had a question. Okay. Ooh, I cannot sign with this brush. I didn't think I could, mm -hmm. but that just proved it. So Yoda was right. What? There was no try. Does do or do not. Yeah, no. I should not have. <laughs> that was a do not. So Michelle would like to know what paints 
can she mix to make a cerulean blue? Um, cerulean blue is is kind of a um, like a phthalo blue and white. It's it's a softer um, a softer uh, blue. So where's my cerulean blue here? So here's a phthalo blue green shade in the with water at the bottom here. You can see how the tone is pretty similar. So if you add white to that, it'll get close to that. Uh -huh. So that's what I would use. Porta France. Yeah. Well, thank you. It's like a bluish green, blue green, pale blue green shade. So. The only question? Yep. Okay. All right. Yeah, I was still giving you a 50-50 chance of adding a flower somewhere. Adding a flower. <laughs> <laughs> you taking bets in chat? Well, you know, it wasn't out of the realm of possibility, that's, that's for sure. That's true. So, just never know. No, I'm going to dab this. Notice that these are a little bit heavy-handed there. So tomorrow is going to be your challenge image. Yeah, I want to try to finish that challenge image that I wish I showed there, the, the one, one with the, the macarons. macarons and... We'll add the plant to it. It's got a plant. Because we'll be traveling on Thursday, so you right. won't be available there. Right. And then we do not have a live show next Tuesday because of the We're same. having a grandbaby. Yay. The best. Marquita. Ooh. No. No? They didn't choose that name for some Amelia. reason? Amelia. There's an M in there. You can claim it. There's an A and an M in there, so yeah. you can both. <laughs> <laughs> we mo we know A M Amelia. You know, they've stuck our initials in there, so it's a nod to the grandparents. We know. No, <laughs> not, <laughs> <laughs> not, not. <laughs> um, yeah, I think that I probably, I wish that I had kind of done the little overlapping right here a little bit more so I could have gotten a little bit more intense because I like how there's that fiery red right in here and I kind of miss that in mine, but I'm not going to mess with it at this point because it's, it's too done. And I do like the translucency that I got in here by putting that black back over. That really helped a lot. Um, so... Yeah, if you do it and you don't like a part, just, you know, the nice thing about having the black background is that, you know, you can just paint over <laughs> paint over it real easy. <laughs> so, um, anyhow, hope you guys liked it and uh, give it a thumbs up. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already and come back and we'll be doing this again. Um, not next week, but the week after. We will be doing the autumn flowers that we were going to be doing next week before we realized... We were going to be out of town. <laughs> we're going to have a grandbaby. <laughs> so, um, yeah, it'll be fun. We'll probably post some pictures on our social media if you want to check those out. Um, all the links down, this, down in the description to where to buy and the materials we use for this project. Um, if you use our links down there, it helps our channel. So we appreciate those who use the Blick and Amazon links and things to buy art supplies helps us out a lot. All right. Thank you guys so much for hanging out with us. Take care and we'll see you next time. Bye.